What's up? What's up? It's your boy Sneaky. You checking in? Mont Magazine. Oh, I got a beautiful guest today. Stunning. You know what I'm saying? Star the new reality hit show, BTS. Ink, paper, scissors. Miss right. Hair by Danny. Yep. Name speaks for itself. You know <laughs> the beautiful turquoise. What's that color? Atomic with- turquoise and blue in the back. All right. Welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem. Um, you look amazing. Thank you. So let's just get us jump into it now. <laughs> We know, we all know you as, you know, a, a dope hairstylist out here in Atlanta. But now we have this show, mm-hmm. Ink Paper Scissors. Take us through that transition and actually the whole beginning of how everything came about with the show. Well, we actually started working on the project roughly about three years ago. And we shot like three pilots. And uh, finally, we had, we had got picked up by BT. And we started filming, I think, like the beginning of June this year. And um, it was a stressful process going from your actual reality with your regular clients behind the scene. And then you start filming and then you have to juggle your kids, your workplace and um, doing TV. But you get immune to it pretty fast. Yeah. And it was a, a different, amazing experience. That's what's up. So you, um, what episode is this? Like episode three? We're on, we're going on the sixth one. Oh, it's the sixth one. I must yeah, it's eight all together. Okay. I watched the one on Tuesday. It's it's really, it's a good show. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's not really that ratchet. It's funny. <laughs> you know, we had Silas on here the other day. And it's you know. Clashing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Clashing. exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, I, like, I know, I, you know, the whole Salon Ramsey, Ramsey chain. So, like, before taping, did you guys already know each other? Because I know it's a bunch of different suites. So, did you guys know each other prior to, to taping? Yeah, we did. Um, it was actually a different cast when we first started. Oh, wow. I can and, only imagine. Right. And a few people decided not to be a part of the project. And then that's where a few other people came in it. So, um, yeah, actually, all of us was in the same building except for maybe like two people. Okay. So, yeah. That's what's up. So, how long have you been doing hair? You know, is that is this something you've already been doing, always been doing, or is this something that, you know, you kind of picked up and then got really good at it? Well, my interest started with it probably like third grade, and, you know, it became like a hobby, something that I was interested in doing. And then over the years, I was wondering, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, I don't want to work for anybody. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I know how to do hair. So I moved to Atlanta from St. Louis seven years ago. And uh, to make a long story short, I've been doing hair professionally for five years. Okay, that's dope. So, I'm a rookie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, rookie, and you know, you're on the show. Um, you got like a legit following. So, I mean, that's, it's not bad for five years. Thank you. So, yes. how do you keep up with like the new trends? Because there's always a new type of technique and stuff. How do you, how are you able to keep up with that? As far as hair or for hair? Hair. Um, well, I just kind of more so do my own thing. Okay. And um, my Instagram page is basically like a portfolio. So whatever I put up there, especially what I put on my hair, nine times out of ten, that's what other people are going to come to get. Gotcha. So do you ever plan on changing the hair color? I do. Um, I really, I've been blue twice, but the producers like the blue, so I went back to the blue. Gotcha. This is how people identify me at the moment, so I'm gonna keep this. Gotcha. And um, maybe by season two, you know, have a different color. We'll see. Different color. I so, never tell people I'm gonna do with my hair. Okay, so you ain't gonna tell us the, no. like a sneak peek of the color. Mm-hmm. I think you do orange. Never done that. <laughs> so, as far as like, you know, what would you tell someone? Because like you said, you started, you know, as you know, it became an interest at an early age, but then you know, as time progressed, you became an adult. You were able to like okay this is what i want to do so what would you tell someone because i mean this is atlanta everybody does hair what are like the proper techniques and stuff you know that you need to do in order to become a licensed hairstylist and things like that so like someone younger or someone trying to get into the industry well it's, it's always continuing education definitely and um i think being in a salon is a very good idea because you learn from other people around you and um a lot of hairstylists is friends with hairstylists, so even if they aren't working at the same salon as you, go to their salon, see what products they're using. Like, you always want to learn. Gotcha. So that's what I recommend. 
different situation. Even with um, YouTube and uh, Instagram. Yeah, that's why I say like a lot of like I know like you know I, I know a pretty good amount about hair, and like I think too, you know the YouTube tutorials. You know I hear a lot of you know makeup artists, hairstylists, and stuff they do to me. And you can learn basically everything you need to know straight off YouTube. Yeah, but a salon is more hands on. Yeah, yeah. You see it in front of you, and a lot of people are part of the hair industry. They're they're willing to teach you whatever it is you want to know. So. Are you sure about that though? Because it's not like you know, if you if they teach you something and then you become better than them and then you taking their clients, and is that not like you know, that typically happens. I don't know bitches that think like that. I mean, if, if that's the type of person you're around that yeah. says stuff like you, you want to get away from them. Definitely. They don't have your best interest in heart. So you just try, you know, what I'm saying anybody, you know, pretty much reach one, teach one, anybody that comes along. That, Especially you know, in my studio. Yeah. You so know. you try to help you know every stylist that comes along. Absolutely, because. I mean, in a sense, you know, I, I kind of am a leader, you know, by it being my own studio, Okay. you know, and I ask them before they start working with me. I don't feel like they're working for me. I feel like yeah. they're working with me. Gotcha. And I don't look at them as competitors. I look at them as co-workers. Co-workers. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like, especially by me having my own studio, if we all doing good, that that makes me do good. It's too, I want people to walk into my salon and see that the salon is filled and everybody is working like that Definitely. that looks good on me as well yeah it does you know what i'm saying make sure so that you know, you got a good uh rate of like you know having people come and you know keep it so what do you look for like if you're bringing someone in or someone's coming for an interview like what are some of the questions you ask because like at the end of the day they aren't working for you but they're working with you but it's still like your your studio so you want to have like a certain type of person absolutely because if if they mess up somebody's hair it's they might even on. remember this stylist but they're gonna remember, remember that they were for hair by nanny studio yeah and nine times out of ten a lot of ways that stylists get recognition is through my page because i advertise my stylist on my main page definitely that's what's up. So pretty much, you know, you like the big sister. You keep everybody in line. <laughs> I mean, that's what it seems like. But like you said, I know, you know, I understand that completely. But, you know, there are some women and people, you know, in the hair industry that they all for themselves. But it's good, you know, to keep that attitude because you will have more people want to work with you. You know what I'm saying? Work for you. Or, you know what I'm saying? And then you continue to build that clientele. Well, it's not just about that, but I'm all for unity, period. Uh -huh. Whether if it's humanity or if it's in our workplace. Definitely, so. definitely. So we're gonna go off subject a little bit. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, we just, you know, had an election. What's your take on that? Um, I would say that we're Donald Trump is our president. It's inevitable for anything else to happen. So the only thing that we could do at this point is wait and see what's gonna happen. Just accept it. You, yeah. you have a choice. Yeah. You have no choice. You have a lot of choices in life, but that's not one of them. That's not one of them, exactly. Yeah. All right, so, you know, you could, um, we also know just talking off um, off camera with um, your publicist, and, you know, going into the end of this month, you know, that's when you guys know if you're going to bring back the second season. So how are the rates and the viewings and stuff, in your opinion? And what kind of feedback have you been getting from, you know, people, you know, like in your circle or, you know, just people out in public when they see you at these events and things? Well, the first person I speak to is BT okay. because they know firsthand than anybody. Gotcha. And they said that uh, we have dramatically been inclining consistently and they're excited with our numbers. So that's number one. That's good. But um, whenever I check Twitter, we always number one, number two, yeah. as far as trending topic. Um, people always have positive things to say. I mean, of course, you're going to have a few people because everything not for everybody. But if yeah, you definitely. like reality TV and then you like beautiful women and men, then this is the place for you. Yep. So. <laughs> get no, don't get no better than that. No. It's a nice looking cast, though. I have to say Thanks. that. But um, so pretty much what is what is something that nobody knows about? You know, people, we watch the shows. We do all these things. What is something that people don't know about here by Danny? that you kind of like maybe keep to yourself or is like something that you don't really bring out that much? Um, <clears throat> initially, it may not seem like I'm a people's person because I'm quiet and reserved, but with my appearance, it's real big and bold. But sometimes it may take me a minute to warm up, but if I got alcohol, it's gonna immediately, <laughs> you know, but a lot of people don't really talk to me because they say I look intimidating, but I'll talk to anybody that'll come up to me. So. That's, so 
is this going to springboard more opportunities that you want to continue to get into tv you know maybe like other you know roles and things like that well i actually auditioned for one role i'm not gonna say okay. what and they went with somebody else i'm not sure who gotcha yeah <laughs> that's what's up that's yeah. what's up um i'm just not looking for to be a reality star that was never my intention it's just that the opportunity came, came to me yeah and it's like oh, okay why not yeah, yeah. Why so not? You know, like I do want to do Vogue. I want to do Elle magazine. I want to do Fashion Week in Paris. Like, yeah, okay. I want to go above and beyond. Like, I'm not just a hairstylist. I'm a stylist. Gotcha. So I'm in the whole beauty industry. Period. Like, I'm a I'm a brand ambassador. Gotcha. So I do more than just hair. Hair. So pretty much, you want to do everything that hair, beauty, fashion, makeup, yes. everything. Mm -hmm. That's dope. But see, that makes you as versatile as possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because then you're more accessible. You know. People brand more brands and stuff want to work with you and see yourself as being like a like a cover girl or like a l'oreal or something like that or <laughs> yeah i actually want to do mac that. brand ambassador or something yeah, like well, that i do want to do my own hair, hair color line okay. i want to get into cosmetics and stuff and um yeah i just i want to be like the renaissance woman that's what's up hair by danny that's what's up i mean i think you're on the right path um you know and i think this show is only going to get you the more exposure that you need you know, and then you know, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. That's what's this up. Is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Well, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Um, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for um, having me. Before we, you know, get out of here, I want you to drop all your social media where they can find you, where they can follow you, where they can book you, where they can see you again. You know. And this is some more advice for upcoming hairstylists, entrepreneurs. Period. When you branding yourself, you always want to be persistent and consistent. Um, and one way to do is keep the same hair by Danny, hair by Danny, everything. Like I pay for the name is my name and nobody else's. So no matter what social network it is, it's hair by Danny. That's what's up. So is that Danny short for something? Or is Danielle. This... Danielle. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's what's up. Well, hair by Danny, Danielle. Um, thank you again. Wish you the best of luck. It's your boy, Sneaky Q, Mott Magazine, hair by Danny. Until next time. Peace.